Okay, so off and away back we are on the Super Duke R1290 Evo, which uh, which the chaps over in Braintree KTM have very kindly lit me out on this bike today. And like I say, on the on the fast country roads, I mean, it's just an absolute revelation. But you have got to be careful, chaps, because you know, in rain and road she's kind of sustainable but once you flick her into sport it really is a completely different bike um you know the suspension stiffens up the throttle response is even quicker and as it is the throttle response has been um quickened on this bike anyway it's a reduced travel on the accelerator so you really have to have your wits about you this isn't the sort of bike that you can ride if you're tired or not quite compass mentis, um, you know, that's only going to end in one way. So you have to be focused when you're riding this bike. It's amazing fun, but it's not a bike that you're just going to poodle about on. You are going to pick up some serious speed and it does encourage you to attack the bends and go for, you know, every bit of straight you see. So the riding position um, is comfortable, no problems, fairly upright. The seat's decent, it's uh, firm. I've done about half an hour on the seat so far today, no problems. My knees are fairly bent. I can grab hold of the belly of the bike with my knees fairly comfortably. The mirrors are very good, very stable, no problems there. And uh, yeah, the screen's very good. The, the way the bike moves, you know, it's very sure-footed into the bends, in and around. All of the motorway and country road riding I've done so far, she's been absolutely perfect. You know, no problems at all, really. Slightly canted forward, a little bit of pressure on the wrists, but, you know, this is a bike you would expect that from anyway and it's a very small bike really um, you know compared to my BMW i1250R it's slightly smaller and uh, obviously the look of the bike is very very striking indeed lots of orange going on here and the, the front of the the bike is uh, you know it's an absolute striking face which I really like I'm a big fan of the way the bike looks but I know that it may well divide opinion because it is quite strong the way the, uh, the way the features are on this bike the big orange wheels see I saw this yesterday no through road but I got through so I'm not quite sure what it's talking about but anyway we'll have a look no key and range why is it saying that well, the key's definitely in my pocket so the bike's just showing no key and range for some reason i don't know why it's saying that because the key is in my pocket and i wouldn't have been able to start the bike if it wasn't so with the big v twin when you go from you know stand still and you start to go you do get that judder and you really feel the engine and you know I don't think you can do too long in sport mode really so I'm going to try and bring it back into road now streets as they call it it's a slightly softer throttle response and less jerky which is what I want really on the country lanes for now at least anyway so as we go along these country lanes there's the suspension well I've got the bike in comfort to be honest with you but it's still quite stiff uh, it's good it's okay um, I can't say I mean it's been a year since I rode the Super Duke R which didn't have this uh, super duper WP suspension and I'm not too sure if I can 
really feel the difference. I mean, I'd need to ride the bikes back to back, to be honest. I know I've watched reviews already, and they've highly praised the suspension setup on the bike and how different it is and, uh, you know, what it adds to the bike. But it also adds a big premium to the bike. And this particular machine has got the super-duper suspension, the electronic automatic suspension which will adjust as you ride basically i've got it set in automatic at the moment also i do believe Actually, i'm just going to check that if the suspension is in automatic da, 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 da. Back. suspension dumping i've got it in comfort actually let's put it in automatic for now then let's put it to automatic Uh, and then we'll see how that is compared to comfort. Oh, see if that's better. <sighs> because the thing is, if you've got it set in one setting only, and obviously we're going to do different roads, we're going to do country lanes, we're going to do in town, we're going to do uh, along the motorway a little bit as well, then, you know, it's, it's going to behave differently. The brakes are absolutely excellent, guys. Twin discs to the front, single disc to the back. It's a usual setup for this type of bike, uh, but they work really nice. They're intuitive. There's good bite when you pull harder. Uh, and the other thing I'm not sure if I've got on is the anti-dive. I would like to have the anti-dive on. Now, I, I rode past this just the other day, and it said road ahead closed. Okay. But it wasn't closed. Let's have a look. Still says road ahead closed. It's not closed. Why is it telling me the road's closed when it's not? And now I've got the bike in road mode. It's a lot more comfortable for me, guys. The sport mode was just a little bit too much. I had to think about the input so much into the throttle. And earlier on, I did get the front wheel up and uh, it did feel a little bit uncomfortable. I don't really want to be riding that aggressively. My style of riding in general is, yes, I like to go quick, but, you know, where I can. Otherwise, I'm kind of just chilling out, really, guys. I'm not a mad, mad racer. I just enjoy being out on the bike. But I don't want to set any land speed records, which I'm sure this bike is more than capable of doing. I'm going to get a bit of a straight here if there's nothing on it. Oh, <laughs> Oh God, guys, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I know I said earlier in the video that, you know, this bike's not going to be great around town. But, you know, down the country lanes, uh, obviously on track, down the twisties. It's brilliant. You know, absolutely brilliant. So comfortable, so responsive and so connected. You know, some of the bikes we've got today, they have got a lot of tech on them, but you just lose that connection and that feel. Uh, but that isn't the case with this bike. It really lets you know where you are on the road, what's going on. And the feedback from the front wheel and the suspension, even, you know, in the settings that I've got currently set. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very much, you know, linked and telling you what's going on. It's brilliant, really. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, you know, the low-down grunt is fine. Pulling away, no problems at all. The gearbox is good. The quick shifter is very nice. Very, very light once I get my foot in the right position. That's nothing to do with the bike. That's to do with my big feet. Uh, so, so far, guys, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really beginning to grow into this now and enjoying this bike a lot more. I wasn't totally sure at first. It's really strange. When I first sat on the bike, I was like, mm, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy this. And I'm not sure if it was because of the, the instant rumble and the bike wanting to go so much or what. I don't know what it was, but I just wasn't quite into it. But now I can really, really feel the appeal of having something like this. And I know when I got my R1250R, I did look at the Super Duke R and I think it was just a bit too expensive. So I didn't go for it. But yeah, this is this is really good. 
Really, really good. And the noise from the bike is also excellent. And the pickup is just... Well, we are there. You've got no problems with the pickup. It's really quick. It's a lovely... I don't know how to explain it. The, the V-Twin is so unique, the way it feels. This 1301cc engine, it's just... It's really, really lovely. A beautiful, beautiful machine. Uh, the way the bike is so flickable, you feel so, uh, you know, well set on the tarmac. It's not the best over the bumps, but then, you know, it's a naked street bike. It's not going to be the best over the bumps. The cruise control is fairly straightforward. You just push that switch there and then touch the plus button and then that's set at 40 miles an hour which is good we'll do the lanes again on the way back to KTM but for now I'm going to stick to the 40 and we'll do a bit of A12 and we'll see what this bike is like on the faster roads it's going to be absolutely fine but it's more about the wind dynamic and actually at 40 miles an hour I'm getting absolutely no wind at the moment very smooth out here. I mean, it's not a particularly windy day. It's a very still day, but we're in a 40, I mean, third gear, street mode. The rumble is lovely. I can sit nice and comfortably. So the price tag of this bike, I want to talk about that because it is hefty. It's, it's almost £18,000, and I think it might be even more once the tech pack's on, but I'll confirm that. But it's a lot of money for a motorbike, and... The problem I have with it, with this particular bike, is that, yes, I'll commute on it, yes, I'll do the Sunday Blast on it, but I'm not going to tour on this bike. Uh, I mean, you, you're bound to say you can get luggage and things like that, but I don't think this bike is going to be comfortable long-term enough to do the sort of miles to take you to Europe etc maybe for younger riders I mean I'm I'm knocking on 50 now guys so I'm a bit older this is an older riders perspective for young riders maybe you will jump on this and uh, and go to Europe on it but I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even think about it to be honest I would not even give it a thought because it's just too connected to the ground. You want something a bit more floaty and soft for that kind of travel. Oh, as he knocks it into neutral. See, I've missed the gearing again. That's me, that is. Stupid me. So, getting up to motorway speeds is not a problem at all on this bike, obviously. Absolutely easy peasy. a good turn see where I'm going uh, a 12 at, uh, just approaching 1 p.m. it's fairly busy daytime running lights on this bike as well which you can turn off and on by the flick of a switch over here which is good so yeah, it's pretty comfortable on the A12, no problems. I mean, this isn't the best road in the world, and there's lots of undulations and bubbles and, you know, changes in the tarmac style. So it's not the most comfortable road to be riding on. Uh, and I would say that, to be honest, yeah, I, I, I could not do long journeys on this bike and the thing is when you're paying that much money for a bike you would want it to be your one and only bike to do everything so if you're a younger rider I'm sure it won't be a problem for you but if you're a bit of an old guy like me this isn't going to be the one and only motorbike that you can own if you're planning on doing anything other than uh, track work and uh, short jump to work 
and your Sunday blasts. If that's all you want it for, then you know this bike ticks those boxes, no problems at all. Uh, and I understand what I'm saying may well be controversial. I'm sure I've seen some super dukes out there while I've been touring in Europe in the past, but definitely they were being ridden by younger riders than me. The quick shift is really good and the engine braking is excellent. And also one other thing I want to tell you about is the clutch. So when, when you're doing slow moves, you stick it into first gear, you've only got to lift the clutch slightly and it pulls the bike nicely and that's a really nice feature. It's just a very obvious movement that it will do for you. And that's very handy and I think that's, that's to do with the fact that it's a V-twin. It's a very, very uh, pleasant feeling. That auto cancellation is not working because I signalled left and it was still signalling left way too far. So, I mean, with auto cancellation on any bike, guys, I'll always say make sure you check it. But it's not. If this bike has got auto cancelling uh, indicators, they're not the best. Now, it won't give me an option to put it into cruise control in second gear at 30. I have to be in third gear at 30 and then it will let me. But third gear in 30 and it's a little bit bumpy. Like the engine's a bit rumbly at this point. It's not particularly comfortable. Yeah, so KTM and Triumph, the same situation on the cruise control. Has to be third gear and 30 miles an hour. So, you know. It's a bit of a strange one, that really. Whereas my BMW, the cruise control, which I, I think the cruise on the BMWs is the best, to be honest, out of, certainly out of KTM Triumph. Uh, their cruise is the best, definitely. You just literally push the button with your forefinger and it will set cruise at 8 miles an hour if you want it to. And I just think having the option to set the cruise when you want in whatever gear you want should really be universal. And these are the little idiosyncrasies I find when uh, looking into reviewing different manufacturers bikes. Oof, bloody hell. I had to come off the pegs there. So I could see that bump in the floor. Wow, hey, that was not good. Oof. Why do we pay road tax, eh? Come on, people. Come on, people. I'm not going to move, are you? That's fine. Excellent for filtering. It's a very narrow bike, this, so really really good for filtering and of course when you get to the line if you want to pull away you don't need to worry it's all there straight away guys here comes the hooligan carving through the traffic 10 out of 10 it's brilliant absolutely brilliant it's really narrow so that makes it so easy, even when you get the odd car driver who doesn't want to move over for you, or actually some of them even move across, which that really annoys me when that happens. But yeah, here we are in uh, Chelmsford Town Centre, going around the, the usual route. And it's a, it's a pleasure, it's very nice indeed to be on this machine. Up quickly. And the front brake is just brilliant. It's really good. The dynamics of the bike to go quick and then brake quickly. I mean, it's what you need, but oh. 
just pulled away in third gear by the way which was absolutely fine and I'm getting a message about the preload adjuster for some reason I don't know why so yeah, I just stalled it because I was in third gear and I didn't I didn't change down into another gear let's just kind of a sideways drag through which we can lovely so earlier on I got a message about the key and now I'm getting a message about the preload adjuster I don't quite know what it's saying but maybe there's something wrong and that was just after I stalled it in third gear so anyway so the clutch is I'm sitting at the lights and controlling the clutch the clutch is quite heavy on the bike actually it's not, not the lightest of clutches but uh, that's just my observation so far on that scenario I'm going to try and get out on some electric bikes when somebody lets me have a go. I have sent some emails out to different suppliers, uh, but nothing back yet. And also, I have tried to get in with uh, Kawasaki, uh, especially the Colchester Kawasaki, because they run Aprilia, Kawasaki, Piaggio, um, and... Uh, Oh, who's the other, what's the other brand? Moto Guzzo. Moto Guzzi. But unfortunately, they are not interested in uh, allowing me to review their motorbikes. So at the moment, I can't do Yamaha. I can't do anything out of the Kawasaki garage either. So apologies for that, guys. So it's just going to be KTM's Triumphs and BMWs for now. Because that's all I can get my hand in. Um, and obviously, big thanks to Jim Aim of Braintree today and to Ben for uh, getting me out on this I will say Ben is one of the nicest chaps you'll meet to be honest so if you do want to try out a KTM this one or one of the others that they do then pop yourself down to Jim Aim in Braintree and uh, have a chat with with Ben and he'll be more than happy to help you out so guys we've done the twisties We've done the in-town riding. We've done a bit of motorway. And up next is the bike walk around. So I'll see you on the green in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rittle Green. And we're here once again doing the bike walk around. Today we have the KTM 1290 Super Duke R Evo, which begins its costing life at £17,899. Um, this particular model is fitted with the optional full tech pack, which then includes track mode, a quick shifter plus, MSR adaptive brake light, which means when you're braking hard, it will flash intermittently to let the person behind know that you're braking hard. Uh, it has Suspension Pro which gives you track advanced and auto damping settings. There's a lot of things on this bike which I'm not going to have time to go through on a first ride review so obviously I'll put the link to the bike in the description of this video so you can go and interrogate the uh, specifics yourself. This bike does have a 1301cc LC8 V twin engine, 180 brake horsepower, and 140 newton meters of torque. So this bike also has anti-dive as a part of the full tech pack, a semi-active suspension, which is a new technology for this year, seven inch TFT screen, a KTM app, which gives you turn by turn nav, media, and call options. The rider modes are street, rain, sport, uh, performance and track. Uh, I've been riding this bike around in rain, sport and street today and to be honest all three modes are very very good. The rain mode uh, keeps the bike down to 130 brake horsepower and all the other modes have the full 180 available. The bike has cruise control, 
heated grips I do believe, keyless ride, self cancelling indicators, the handlebar has four positions, front to back, 22mm of range, and the foot pegs have two positions. The LED headlights with daytime running lights. At the front we have Brembo brakes and also at the back. Two 320 dual front floating discs at the front and a 240mm disc at the back. Um, cast aluminium wheels with Bridgestone S22 tyres as standard. A 16 litre tank and the seat height is 835 millimetres. The colour we have here today is silver and orange, but you can also get orange and black. And to be honest, that's probably the colour that I would go for if I was going to get this bike myself. Uh, it's fully customisable, this bike, with the wheels, the exhaust, screen, seats, levers and foot pegs. So it's a really, really customisable machine and obviously a very, very striking motorbike. And that exhaust there that we can see um, and more so the actual exhaust towards the front of the bike that runs out from the bottom of the inlet. It reminds me of a monster, uh, a Ducati monster. I don't know what you think guys, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. Uh, the wheels are really striking as well. And that blue sticker, if you like, that blue colour you can see just at the top of the silver, the fork there, that depicts the WP semi-automatic suspension. The uh, riding position on the bike is quite straight up, quite uh, quite easy going, not too bad. Knees are bent, but uh, it's a little bit of pressure on the wrists. As you'll expect, it's quite a sporty type of bike, but whilst it's a naked uh, street bike as well, it's not really, really aggressive, but it's not gonna be all day comfortable. I don't think you're going to be touring on this sort of machine. This is more for your Sunday blasts and your uh, your track days definitely because it's very track orientated with the uh, technology that we have on the bike. Um, but the look of the bike is very striking and it really does get you seen which I think also is very important when you're riding a motorbike. You've obviously got the very very striking front end there with the air intake between the lights um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the look of the bike. So what we're going to do now is we're quickly just going to dip into the screen and I'll talk you through uh, very briefly because there's a lot here, guys. So very simply to turn the bike on, we hit the switch here. Ready to race comes up and then this is your home screen. OK, to dive into the menus. You come over here, I'm going to push over to the right. And that brings you in. So you've got KTM My Ride, which is the app where you can have directions and media and phone calls. Trip data, trip one, trip two, general info, tire pressure, warning service, extra functions, slip adjuster, track, anti wheelie, launch control, motor slip regulation, emergency stop indicator, quick shifter plus. Suspension Pro, oh my goodness, it just goes on, doesn't it? There's lots and lots of things there. Rider modes, as I said, we've got rain, street, sport, performance and track. And the rain mode uh, reduces you down to 130 brake horsepower. Motorcycle, so we've got our safety features here, your MTC and MSR, ABS, and quick shifter pro and you can basically turn all of these features off and on uh, and the abs is either set to road or supermoto okay the suspension got your damping automatic sport street comfort track advanced your preload auto high auto standard auto low and a manual function where you can decide how much you want what percentage which is really useful. We'll come out of that. An anti-dive, which I've got on, you can turn it off. And you've got settings, custom switches, Bluetooth, headset type, display theme, uh, automatic on night. The, the night, it switches to night if you're in automatic and it's quite good, so that's nice. When it gets dark, it lights up in a different color. That means you can see. The button illumination, so it's got backlit buttons, so that's good. Got bright, medium or dark or off. Shift light, when you want it to come on. 
daytime running lights on or off, clock, unit, language, heated grips, heated seat. And that is that as far as the screen goes. So over here on the buttons, we have got the lights here, cruise control here. This is your back button for the menu. Um, obviously that's the controls when you're in the menu. That's your cruise control plus and there's a minus at the back behind that. Then we've got the left and right switch. We've got the horn, which is really neat. I mean, come on, who's going to hear that? Wow, KTM, that's bad. You've got your uh, hazard lights, on off button and kill switch. OK, uh, this bike is keyless, so this will open automatically on its own when you want to put fuel in, which is handy. Um, the mirrors are very good, easy to adjust, and once they're adjusted, they stay in place. So that's really very good. Uh, the seat is padded. It's a very, very nice seat. It's nice and wide as well. It's low and wide, which is good for me because I'm a big guy. And your pillion seat is fairly firm and soft. So, you know, your pillion will be able to come along with you. And depending on how young you are, really, I mean, for an old guy like me, I'm not going to be running my girlfriend on this pillion seat for very long but younger people won't have a problem at all and you know overall guys so far the bike's been an absolute revelation it's been absolutely superb um, not too keen about riding it in town in the lower speeds at 30s but once you get out of the 30 and onto the higher speed roads it's just an absolute dream uh, filtering is brilliant um, overtaking no problem at all straight line speed wonderful Round the S-Bends, round the twisties, absolutely brilliant. So yeah, it's been a real pleasure riding this motorbike today. So just want to say a big thank you to uh, Jim Aim KTM in Braintree uh, and to Ben, who's allowed me out on this bike today. So I'm just going to jump on this bike now and take it back to Jim Aim. So in summary for today's ride, guys, I've got to tell you that this bike is so much fun to ride, really. An absolute joy on the fast roads, on the 40s. In town it's a little bit more tricky. Even in street pulling away just there, the throttle is a little bit snatchy. So you've got to be so careful for very, very... What are you doing? For very, very chilled out input. You've got to really, really go easy because you'll very quickly get into trouble if you don't. For a six foot three rider, no problems to get on. The riding position is comfortable, slightly canted forward. The performance of the bike is brilliant in all modes. Uh, rain mode being the least quick, which uh, has only 130 brake horsepower as opposed to 180 brake horsepower in all the other modes. In sport mode, it really is super quick. I can see you indicating you are turning that way. Lovely. So guys, I just want to thank you, a big thank you for watching this video today. To those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much indeed. And if you are watching and you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe if you can, if you would be kind enough to do so, because it does help me a lot and I'm trying to get up to that magical 1,000 subscribers. So uh, please do consider that. Um, it's been a wonderful ride out here today on the KTM 1290 Super Duke R Evo. Um, a big thanks to Jim Aim of Braintree, KTM, for allowing me out on this bike today. If you have any questions or comments on the video today, please obviously leave them below and I'll do my very best to get back to you on those questions. But until next time, guys, from me and the 1290 Super Duke R Evo, it's goodbye for now. forget was to show you what the exhaust sounds like and on this bike it's particularly important so I'll start off for you